A Seal here. In this video, we're going to talk about hex editing. In my opinion, hex editing is the simplest form of game hacking that doesn't rely on cheat codes or in game consoles or anything of that sort. It's a single player game hacking method. There are multiplayer game hacking methods that are similar, uh, usually involve resource editing, those are far more complicated. We're just going to be focusing on editing save files for single player games. And this allows us to do all sorts of fun stuff, like editing our health, our gold, uh, our position if we want to get ourselves somewhere we shouldn't be, all sorts of really cool stuff. Uh, and it's not too complicated either. The only tools we'll need are the handy dandy Windows calculator and HXD, a hex editor. And we want the Windows calculator for its programmer mode. You go into View, Programmer, and it brings up a display where we can convert between our counting system, base 10 decimal, to hex, which is a base 16 system. And we can just check these radio buttons and switch between the different... it converts automatically between the different systems for us. And we want HXD in particular just for this analysis tab. Most hex editors are pretty much the same, but HXD I think is the best in my my opinion because it has these tools. It has the statistics tool and the file compare tool, both of which are incredibly useful. Um, they can be a little complicated, so I'll just get into them later, but just note HXD is the way to go. And the game we're going to be starting out with is Dink Smallwood. And if you couldn't judge by the title, it's a kind of silly game. A little retro, you can tell by the graphics as well, but there's a lot of very useful lessons to take away, so... I would go ahead and download these games, you can get them for free. If you Google Dink Smallwood, it should be one of the first results. There's a free download button, easy. HXD, Google it. Go to the home, home tab, of or home page of the website. There's a download page, go there, select whatever language you want it in. Pretty straightforward. I can put links in the description for those of you that are incredibly lazy. Anyhow, hop into the game, and the first thing we want to do is save. And we do that by walking over to the save shrine over here. Hit space, control, control, save to slot one. Great. Now, we're going to have to locate that save file somewhere on our hard drive. It would be very tedious to just go through and manually search for it, because there's all sorts of places that games like to put save files. They can put them in weird temporary folders under users, app data, weird weird locations. Sometimes they put it in the program files directory with the application itself. All sorts of places they can put it. And there's some logical places to search, but sometimes it can be very difficult. Uh, you could always Google for your particular game where it's saved. That that often works, but if that doesn't work, there's ways to find it yourself, and I'm doing that here right now, but what you do is basically you search your hard drive with special terms to filter filter out things you don't want, and uh, the f one of the terms is the date it was modified. If you saved it today, then obviously you'd put today's date. So if, for me, today is May 5th, 2014. So I would search for date modified, May 5th, 2014. Easy enough. And then the second term here, the system.file name, uh, searches for things that contain a particular word, in my case save. And note this tilde here. If this tilde was gone, it would be an exact search, but because it's there, it only means that the file name contains the word save. Which is what we want, because it's very very likely that a game would save the save file with the word save somewhere in the name of the file itself. What we could also do is delete the E, because sometimes games save it with a .sav extension. Both of those are valid. Um, it's up to you what you want to do. And this one's not super useful, but sometimes you get a lot of results and you want to filter some of them off, so you search with a file size restriction, and save files are generally pretty small, so this can be useful. Um, Honestly, for me, it's only ever come up maybe once, but it's worth noting. And also note that the system dot is an optional thing, so I, I leave it out when I search. And so I'm searching something like this. 
the file name contains the word save and you can you can combine these terms with uh, the word and in caps the date modified is today so I would go and I would search this whole thing on my hard drive and you can see I've already done that and I found save one dot dat which is exactly what I want and so I can actually let's see if I can uh Oh, this is opening up a yeah, recent instead of the actual location. It needs to search a little longer, but let's not worry about that right now. We can go in. Once it comes up with the location, we can actually navigate there. For me, it was in the program files, Dink Smallwood HD, under the folder called Dink, and there was a save, save1.dat in there. You can go ahead and open that up. So this uh, this display can be a little overwhelming at first if you're not too used to this sort of thing if you're if you're new to game hacking but it's actually pretty straightforward uh, offset here is, is is almost like a line number or a byte location uh, you simply look at a byte see this one's 74 right here uh, the row is CO column is OC therefore you add them CO plus OC you get CC and it says down here too so you can just look at here and it'll tell you exactly what the offset is the uh, the line number for this byte and this giant display is just the raw bytes of the file just take the file and read in the numbers and display them on the screen and then over here we have an attempt to interpret those bytes into human readable text using a system called ASCII. And so see see here we have the word level. It was able to pull that out of these bytes. And sometimes you just get garbage text, random floating letters, meaningless junk, because not everything is meant to be human readable. Sometimes the computer knows what to do. The game knows how to read in the save file and it's not going to be clear text every time. And uh Okay, I guess that pretty much covers the uh, setting things up, finding save files, getting into the game. In later videos, we're, we'll, we'll explore different methods for actually editing this information. This video was just dedicated to getting to this point, getting set up so that we can do those things. Alright, thanks for watching, and farewell.